If you spent any time around digital video, you've probably heard the terms full frame, crop frame, and crop factor. But where did these terms come from, and do they really apply to us in the video world? Last year, we decided to add a Canon C100 to our repertoire of gear, a pretty expensive and serious professional video camera uh, to go along with our wonderful 5D DSLR. As we were researching it, we came across some interesting comments stating, hey, you're gonna have to use a crop factor uh, with that C100. Wait, what? Are you saying the C100 has a crop factor? Oh, hold on. We're gonna spend serious coin on a camera. That doesn't make any sense, is that true? This didn't seem right to me. Something was off. Time for some more serious research. Pull my focus style. Full frame, crop frame, crop factor. These terms came into use when DSLRs, along with their digital sensors, came into being. But what are they and where did they come from? Well, back in the day, still photographers loaded their 35 millimeter cartridge into the camera horizontally across the gate. A nice frame for your lens to project your image onto. 36 by 24 millimeters of pure, wonderful emulsion. So still photographers slapped their treasured prime lenses on these cameras and got used to knowing what field of view they would get with their lenses on 35 millimeter film. When they used a 50 millimeter, they knew that it would give them the field of view equivalent to what the human eye saw. Anything lower, like a 35 millimeter or 28, was wider, and anything higher, like a 75 and up, was tighter. So when digital sensors came along, that was an important consideration to keep in mind. To create a sensor that matches the same area as 35 millimeter film, so still photographers would get the same field of view with their lenses. But a full frame sensor is expensive to make. You can only fit so many of them on a silicone wafer. But what if you made a smaller sensor, allowing more to be made cheaper, thereby creating a more affordable entry level camera? The crop frame sensor was born, such as my Canon 70D here. Forgot to charge the battery. Spuds, could, could, you, could you add the sound of audio for? No, S still camera, still, I'm still on still cam, thank you. Even more people were happy, but if you use standard lenses with these crop frame sensor cameras, you didn't get the same field of view. You see, only the center of the image cast by a lens, like say a 50 millimeter, would be captured by this smaller sensor. The field of view was cropped. So if you're using a 50 millimeter, you're really only getting the field of view an 80 millimeter lens would capture. What are still photographers to do? Use a crop factor. Canon 70D, for example, if you're using a 50 millimeter lens, you're really getting closer to an 80 millimeter field of view. So you multiply by a crop factor of 1.6 to get 80 millimeters. This crop factor was needed by still photographers so they could adjust the lens choices they made when they were using crop sensor cameras. This meant to get that 50 millimeter field of view they were used to, the equivalent of the human eye field of view, they needed to use a 35 millimeter lens. Now still photographers had a high-end still and video camera in their hands that used their cherished and expensive prime lenses. The line between still and video blurred. Whether shooting stills or video with a crop frame camera, photographers had to use a crop factor when using their standard lenses. Okay, got it. But what about my wonderful yet expensive professional quality video camera? Does it have a crop frame sensor or not? Do I have to use a crop factor with it? Well, the answer is yes and no. It depends on what world you're from, still or video. Remember how 35 millimeter film in a still camera was loaded horizontally across the gate, making the 35 millimeter measurement the height of the frame and leaving you all of this real estate uh, for your exposure. But in the film world, 35 millimeter film loaded down vertically through the gate. So the 35 millimeter measurement of film was relegated to the width, meaning 
The image area is therefore smaller, 22 by 16 millimeters, pretty darn close to the crop frame sensor size of 24 by 15 millimeters. Hmm, interesting. This meant that in the film world, the 50 millimeter lens wasn't the equivalent of the field of view of the human eye, but the 35 millimeter lens was. In other words, if you worked in the film biz, you slapped on a 35 millimeter to get that human eye field of view equivalent, different from the still world. That 35 millimeter, that's the same lens that when used on a crop frame DSLR gives you the 50 millimeter equivalent in the still world. So what does that mean? That there's a dividing line here. That if your experience is in the still world, shooting either 35 millimeter still film or full frame DSLRs, then you're used to a certain field of view with your lenses. 50 millimeter is your middle point. But if your experience is in the film world, then a 35 millimeter lens is your middle point for field of view. Anything lower is wider, anything higher is telephoto. The crop factor only applies if you're used to standard lenses in the still world. It's really that simple. It's totally up to you and your choice whether you use a crop factor or not. So yes, the 24.6 by 13.8 millimeter sensor in a C100 is equal to a crop frame sensor. But it's also equal to the image area of 35 millimeter vertically fed film. Wait, does that mean I'm downgrading from a 5D to a C100 professional camera? Not in the least, and we'll cover that in another video. Both cameras are great, but different tools on set. Someone put it really well, One's a screwdriver, the other a wrench. They both kind of turn things, but they do it differently. And we'll cover that. It takes a whole video. We can't, we can't do everything now. Now, you might be thinking, why didn't they just load film through film cameras horizontally, huh? Well, they did. I have just made a motion picture, north by northwest. Back in the 50s, Paramount came out with VistaVision, and some classics were shot on it. But it didn't last. The cameras were really heavy, especially with a blimp to keep the sound down. They were prone to mechanical problems because the film had to scream through the gate at twice the speed of a standard 35 millimeter camera in order to maintain the 24 frames per second film speed. And it used twice as much film. Film was an expense that had to be bought and developed. So doubling that amount of film, not great for the budget, especially compared to today when we just recorded this little guy and then transfer off of it and then wipe it clean, all for the one-time cost of $35 US. Man, we have it easy today. But VistaVision wasn't in vain. It was picked up by special effect crews in the 70s because they needed that larger image area to counteract the increased grain they were getting from doing all of these compositing for all those space battles they were shooting for some obscure film that at the time I think they called it the Star Wars. Now if you were wondering, hmm, what's the digital resolution equivalent of 35 millimeter film? Well, there's a bit of debate about it, but Kodak says it's equal to 6K, pretty high. Now, what's VistaVision? But well, my calculations, roughly about uh, 10 to 11K. Now IMAX, that other horizontally fed film format, except they used 70 millimeter film, it's equivalent, 18K. Put that in your 4K pipe and smoke it. So there you have it. When to use the crop factor or not. Hope that helps uh, and keeps things simple so that you can just focus on shooting editing and making great videos. Thanks again for watching. Check out pullmyfocus.tv for the companion articles with our videos uh, and make sure to check out our other videos and let us know anything else that you'd like us to cover. Uh, we love doing this and inspiring you guys. We're getting great feedback. We're going to keep going. We love it.